Hello again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and I'm excited to wrap up our lesson over Topic 5.1, all about the mean value theorem. And we're going to be taking a look at like a real world application in this particular case. Wait a minute, what's going on? What's going on? What? What? Who are you? I, I am sorry, sir, but can you please give me your license and registration? What, what are you talking about? What did I do wrong? I, I didn't do anything wrong. What's going on? Well, we're about to find out. So stay tuned. Okay, here we go. We've got a real world application of the mean value theorem right here. And it's something that I think most of you can relate to as you're now of the age that you're starting to drive or very soon may be driving. So let's take a look at this situation. Two stationary police cars equipped with radar are five miles apart on a radar or on a highway, as seen in the figure. Um, as a semi truck passes the first patrol car, the speed is clocked at 55 miles an hour. So I might make a little notation of that. Here we got the truck clocked at 55 miles per hour. Four minutes later, that same truck passes a second patrol car and he is clocked at 50 miles per hour. Prove that the truck either did or did not exceed the 55 mile per hour speed limit at some time between the two police cars. And what does this have to do with calculus for that matter? Well, it has everything to do with calculus because this is a real life application of the mean value theorem. And you don't want to think of the mean value theorem so much here as f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, although that still works. But what we want to think of here is that the derivative at some point, a derivative, is just equal to a slope. Well, let's get a little bit more context here. What do you mean by a derivative? Well, the derivative, when it comes to motion, has and always will be an instantaneous rate of change. Or we can think of it as some kind of an instantaneous velocity, if you will. And that is what can get you a ticket. When you have an instantaneous velocity, that means that you have been clocked on a radar, let's say, at a speed that exceeds the speed limit. Now, the slope is, just like it always has been, our average velocity in this case. So what we're basically going to show is that the average velocity is going to equal some instantaneous velocity that would exceed the speed limit. So let's see how we're going to do this. So for our average velocity, we're going to just simply take the change in distance and divide it by the change in time, because that's what it always has been. So in this particular case, the change in distance would be the, the, the amount of, of position that this truck had accumulated between those two points. And as you can see up here, that would be five miles. So you've got your change in position at five miles. And then we do the same thing with our time. Well, the change in time between those two positions is four minutes. However, that's a bit of a problem because we don't really relate speed in terms of miles per minute. Our speedometer or our speed limit signs are always in miles per hour, at least here in the United States. So we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion. And you know what to do here. You need to get some minutes up on top and some hours on the bottom. And it's pretty clear that 60 minutes over one hour will fit the bill here. And by the time you do a little bit of calculation, maybe a little bit of reducing perhaps, you end up with 15 times 5, which is 75, and your units are miles per hour. So we have mathematical proof that this truck was averaging 75 miles per hour. What that means is the instantaneous rate of change had to also equal 75 miles per hour at least once. And I have a pretty strong suspicion that this truck was probably going 75 miles an hour at least twice. And the reason I say that is that if you think 
from the graphical standpoint here, starting here on the right, the truck would have to have sped up from 55 miles an hour to something probably more than 75 in order to maintain an average of 75. And then at some point, the truck would have slowed down to get to 55 miles an hour and thus would have probably hit that 75 mile an hour threshold again. Who knows, this truck may have gone, may have been going say 80 miles an hour. So we can certainly say that the, the truck was certainly speeding. So we can say that the trucker was going 75 miles an hour. And if we say at least once, it's acceptable because that's all that it takes in order to get this speeding ticket. Now, that brings up another point altogether. Can you get a speeding ticket if this scenario came about? Well, laws are different in different places, but um, I know that places that are very heavy with cameras and, and traffic and so forth uh, that is monitored very, very much by the eye in the sky, that could pose problems and situations for those people that live in those particular areas. So in any event, we may be safe here. I don't know, maybe. Excuse me, sir. You, you were speeding. You were speeding, sir. Oh, so I guess calculus got me this time. Anyhow, thanks for joining.